Welcome back to Power Hour. Thanks for joining us. Caring about your world, doing the next right and honorable thing. And I think if anybody is doing the next right and honorable thing, it is our very own Sheriff Richard Mack, who, of course, heads up the CSPOA, the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. And I thank the gentleman who corrected me on there. I said police, and he said it is Peace Officers Association. Big difference. We're so glad to have him join us today because he is in Nevada. He is unfortunately just about to lose his voice, though. So we're going to try and be real conservative with him to find out what happened. Uh, but we are just so thrilled to have Sheriff Richard Mack join us. Thank you, Richard, for joining us in the Power Hour today. It's all right, Joyce. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm really glad that you guys are involved in this. There's still a, a lot happening here. All right. Bring us up to speed. We heard Friday, you know, the cows were loose. They were killing some of them. Uh, but that's what we heard on Friday. What happened over the weekend, Richard? Well, for a brief moment and uh, at least one day, uh, Freedom won, and it was a great celebration. Uh, Mr. Bundy really uh, pushed the envelope here, uh, and he forced the sheriff into a corner that the sheriff really couldn't get out of, and and so he finally showed up. Now, there's one key point here I want all your listeners to know. Sheriff Bundy had refused to get involved for weeks, maybe even months, that uh, because uh, Clive Bundy was trying to get him moving, and uh, he, he just kept saying, no, I can't, uh, I don't have the authority to do that, they're the federal government, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if we go back even further, when we had our uh, conventions here, uh, Sheriff Gillespie refused to even talk to us about attending. Uh, one time he said, uh, he threw his secretary or somebody else, uh, he said, oh, well, thanks for the invitation, but I can't be there. And, and, uh, but he, he, so he, he's never had any interest at all to do anything here except to try to be, uh, a puppet for the casinos and, uh, a paper server for the courts and, and uh, just go along to get along with the local corruption in the Las Vegas Metro uh, Sheriff's Office. Uh, and they're both the same here. Las Vegas PD or Las Vegas Metro is all under the office of the sheriff. And so he's in charge of all of this. Any Anytime any cop does anything, they shoot somebody and it gets uh, br brushed under the rug or swept under the rug. He's in charge. He's the one. He's been uh, uh, in charge of a, a sheriff's office that's been very corrupt. And uh, so he never got involved. He's been making these statements and hiding uh, behind his PR officer and whoever else he gets to answer the phone. He won't even answer the phone. He won't come out when they had a rally in front of his office. So finally, on uh, Saturday, he he comes out, and he's here. He, he, he was here. And he got up on the stage, and he announced that the BLM needed to back off. And so now we... We, we have proof positive. Well, um, Mr. Bundy, uh, Clive Bundy, I, I call him Mr. He's never been Mr. to me. I've known him for a long time, and I, I know some of uh, his children because they've all been in this fight. They've been at uh, freedom rallies and other meetings here that, uh, in Las Vegas and Arizona and uh, Utah, and I think uh, I've met him also in Idaho uh, because he's been fighting this for the last 20 years. Well, so have I, and this, uh, places where I've been asked to speak here in the West, he's, he's been there lots of times. And uh, and sometimes if he can't make it, then one of his uh, uh, kids are there. So, but th what I want everybody to realize is that what we've been doing at CSPOA has actually worked. And the reason that these people backed off was because the sheriff finally got involved. So either Sheriff Gillespie lied and said that he couldn't do anything because Saturday he showed up and did something, or he was dead wrong. And I don't trust any of this still. But you have to still realize the sheriff showed up and BLM left. BLM obviously knows that the sheriff is in charge. He does have the authority to be here. And they do want to either work with him, uh, either either for bad or for good. They, they know they have to go through the sheriff. And so finally... We have another stark example of the sheriff who really is in charge. And so uh, the Freedom Day that this was, M Mr. Bundy told the sheriff, 
you either get here and take care of this or I will. And I'm not kidding you. And he and he wasn't backing down. And, and he, he really made that uh, very clear to the sheriff. And so the sheriff finally shows up. And, and then when I get here with my son Saturday morning, um, it, it's pretty much calmed down. But before the sheriff got here, the, there was 175 protesters walking up to the the cat the uh, corral the makeshift corral where they were holding the cattle hostage isn't that a crazy thing to say holding the cattle hostage by our own federal government oh my goodness and they were walking up there and our CSPOA representative who made it here before me thank goodness called me and told me they're going to kill us he said sheriff there's like twenty five thirty machine guns and other high-powered rifles pointed at us, and they're telling us they're going to kill us. They are threatening to arrest us, which is wow. what we anticipated, but they're going to kill us. And I think the American people need to be more than concerned, and they need to be outraged that we have almost hired mercenaries, and I believe that they had some from Halliburton or Blackwater, whoever they were, they had some hired, because they wanted to make sure if they told somebody to shoot us, that it happened, and that there's not going to be anybody feeling guilty about shooting unarmed people. The group that went up there were, uh, was unarmed. And uh, this is a 15-year law enforcement veteran that is calling me and telling me to tell his wife that he loves her and that he's not going to make it because oh these people goodness. are going to shoot him. And the 175 were going to be shot. And then... The uh, deputies arrived uh, at the scene and just came on in, and the highway patrol was coming here, and they were going lights and siren past us on the freeway. And I committed about uh, 20 different uh, uh, traffic violations. I, I put my flashers on, and I went around the crowd that was stuck on the, the freeway because uh, it was just such an emergency that was going on. I told him, wait till I get there, wait till I get there. And he says, Sheriff, this is, this is happening. And uh, so... Uh, we went up there, and it all had been uh, uh, calmed down, and uh, the situation stopped. But it was because the highway patrol and uh, the deputies arrived that uh, people didn't get shot. And uh, so no arrests were made. Nobody got hurt. And then uh, Bundy's uh, cow cowboys. I mean, this was such an amazing moment, uh, Joyce. I, I can't tell you how absolutely most powerful moment I've been a, a part of. There was like 55 cowboys on horses that went in to get those cows and then released them. And there was about 700, 800 people watching all this, standing there in the middle of the desert, right next to I-15, uh, watching these cowboys go get the cows. And when those cows were released, there was about three or 400 of them. I don't know, you couldn't really count them all. And these American heroes known as cowboys were bringing them out of there. And then right before the, the cowboys went in there, you have to see this picture, and there is a picture of it. They stopped and put their cowboy hats across their heart, and they had a prayer while they were standing, uh, mounting oh, the horses. Wow. That had to be powerful. It, the whole thing was, and, and when we watched those cows come out of there, every one of us had tears in our eyes. And it was a most powerful, freedom-enhancing moment. It, the, it was like the, the Spirit of God was just burning. And it, we won. The Bundys won. America won. We the people won. The militias that were here won. And it, it was just absolutely astonishing. But we've learned some very important historical fact here. The sheriff is in charge whether he, whether he likes it or not, and he didn't like it. And he didn't want to be here, and uh, but uh, his hand was forced. And uh, right now, we are very much afraid, though, that uh, all of this was a ploy. We've uh, we've yeah, this is all going across the internet that it was a ploy. We've had intelligence sources within uh, the Bundy uh, loop that have uh, expressed that, and that they're coming after the Bundys in a nighttime raid. Uh, that uh, they're not done with this by any stretch of the imagination, and we know they're not done. We said afterwards that we knew that this was uh, not finished, and it's not finished. 
And so we're still very much concerned about this. We're really worried about this. And the American people need to be watching this, and they need to be outraged. And if something else happens, every American needs to converge on this and get out here and help these people. All right, let me ask you this. About how many total people showed up from, quote-unquote, our side, which I hate to have to put it that way, but from we the people's side? Well, that's a great way to put it. I love that part. It, it was really the, we the people. And I would say uh, a lot have come and gone. Uh, I would say about 1,500 uh, total. Um, and it, And that show of force was something they were not ready for. And uh, that part really worked. And sure. if we hadn't, I think this would have ended uh, much differently. And and every one of us here, we had a meeting last night. There was about uh, 16 of us, including the uh, representatives and senators from Arizona who had come up to help. And that really helped. And um, it, I, it, every one of them in that room, all 15, said that there's no question that if people hadn't showed up, including the Bundy family who was here uh, to me, there was two of them from the Bundy family and two from the Wayne Hage family, or Wayne Hage, they actually said it is Hage, that fought this battle, uh, that had been fighting this for the past 25 years on the exact same issues. All right, we got a four-minute break. We'll be back after this four-minute break with our guest today, Sheriff Richard Mack. He is there in Nevada to give us the down and dirty what happened there. Hopefully the positive also. And um, we've got Vince Finelli in the studio. Sam Bushman will be right back. Welcome back to Power Hour. Thank you for joining us. Caring about your world, doing the next right and honorable thing. It is 24 minutes after the hour. And we are celebrating today, celebrating the fact that no one got arrested, no one got injured, no one was killed, but is it over? And that's the question we have for uh, Sheriff Richard Mack today. Uh, My question was how many people were there, somewhere around 1,500 people were there. They probably come and go. And I know our listeners, I want to say, I haven't told you this, Richard, but uh, our listeners, you know, raised $3,400 to go um, to the CSPOA and to um, Mr. Bundy. And then um, I, there was one well, lady wait, that wait, called. Wait, wait. Yeah, uh, uh, you did tell me, and I uh, uh, handed uh, almost all of that to him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What did so, he say? Uh, what when, was his comment? When I comment? got there, um, he was there on the stage, and um, about an hour later, I got on the stage, and I announced that, and he had left, but his daughter was there and she came up and accepted it and the envelope and I announced that this was the money from the Power Hour listeners and Joyce Riley and I handed them a big old envelope of cash and then the night before some people had given me some checks for them and I handed them all I handed them all that is awesome well the one part I didn't tell you though was that there was one lady who called in and she wanted to give all the money she had which was four dollars and 41 cents and that is it and oh, wow. she said, that's all I've got. And she was an elderly lady, as I recall. And uh, so our people out at the Power Mall said, well, do you want to just give a flat four? And she said, no, I want to give all that I have. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Good I thought great. that was amazing. Oh. So that's what people are doing. Because people are, people are understanding how big this is now. People are understanding that this means it is on now. And we cannot back down, correct? Well, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we can't. And... Uh, the the poor Bundys have been f- so financially strapped on this. You know, th- they have like eight children, and they don't all live here. And they've had to come in from. Uh, there's one that lives in Maricopa County in Arizona, not too far from me. That's uh, Ammon uh, and his wife, and uh, they've been here. And so these people haven't been able to work. They've been here to defend and and protect their father and to stand by him. Uh, others live up in Utah. Others uh, in Idaho. Uh, some still live around here close, but uh, this has been extremely uh, expensive for them. And uh, not only that, they haven't they haven't been able to, of course, uh, do their business here on their ranch, and so everything's been shut down in their family, and, and it's been really expensive. And then Oath Keepers has been raising money for them, and uh, they've committed uh, about ten thousand uh, dollars. We've committed another. Uh, two or three thousand, but we've already uh, CSPA has been uh, so strapped financially. Also, uh, 
because we're paying for this uh, conference that we're having out there with you and Sam and Kurt and Vince and all the people that are helping with that. And then we paid for all the uh, uh, Arizona delegates to be here. And and I'm really proud of the. I tell you, they they really stepped up to get here. But we paid for their trip to get here and their hotel here in Mesquite, Nevada. And Mesquite, Nevada is really the closest sort of major town. It's not a, a very big town, obviously, but uh, it's only about uh, I'd say about seven or eight miles away from the staging area where you've seen uh, all the press conferences and and the speeches that have been taking place there. So th this has gotten really expensive. Anybody that can uh, still help CSP away with this and and uh, and you, whatever whatever you've done here, Joyce, it's just been absolutely amazing like you are every time. And we really appreciate it. It's very much needed. Uh, but uh, we've got to stand behind this, and we've got to stay behind the groups that are here with boots yes. on the ground yes. helping. And, uh, of course, uh, Stuart Rhodes has been here uh, for about five days. Um, his people have been here uh, for even longer. Uh, our CSPOA people have been here even longer. In fact, uh, our representative went up to Sheriff Gillespie and told him, hey, we really appreciate you doing this, and uh, Sheriff Mack and the CSPOA really appreciate you getting here. And of course, he just mumbled something, you know, because he, 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 there is, I don't want anybody to think that this is an honorable man. He is not. Gillespie is not an honorable man, plain and simply. But, uh, he, I, I am still so grateful that he got here because he really did change the situation and he proved once again that the sheriff is the ultimate law authority in the, in the country and in the county. He may not be an honorable man, but we want to give him credit where credit's due, though, right? Uh, a little. A little, <laughs> yes. Yeah, a well, little. He's coming along. He's not totally in the negative, and, and we appreciate any move that anyone makes at this point. Uh, when we come back from this break, I want to know what you think is going to take place after this. Now, I know Newsmax is taking credit for all of this by saying that they were able to get them to turn around because of the Reed issue and the Chinese property. We'll, we'll talk about that, but Newsmax wants to take credit for that. We'll be back after this three-minute break with the Power Hour. Stay tuned. We are talking to Sheriff Richard Mack. He is in Nevada. He is reporting on what took place there. And the concern from a lot of people is that it's not over. There's no way in my mind that I believe they're just going to walk away and say, okay, you guys won, never mind, checkmate, uh, we're out of here. I don't think that's going to happen. And so now what do we need to be aware of? What do we need to do? And uh, what, what are your recommendations at this point, Richard? Uh, everybody better be ready. Uh, I would say that uh, this would be an alert situation. You, everybody needs to be on alert. Uh, we still might need you to get out here. Uh, there's not a lot of easy ways to get here. And uh, they've been shutting down I-15, which is the main uh, egress-ingress really? to this area. So uh, if that's shut down, and yeah, we're going to have to find some alternatives if this uh, happens again. Oh. And Sheriff, I believe, what is our excuse for shutting that down? Uh, to control the situation and make sure that uh, uh, people aren't going to get into the area that might get hurt or get in to the way of their assemble. bullets flying. Wow. It, you know, that, that's the only thing it can be. And so, uh, again, control is their main thing, and they're going to control it no matter what. And, I mean, uh, uh, it normally takes from Las Vegas to get here uh, to Bunkerville or Mesquite. It takes about just a little bit over an hour. And it was taking like three hours uh, for people to do that. And, and some never got here at all because of it. It's just, it was just absolutely uh, insane. And um, so uh, when I, when I did what I did, uh, uh, it, 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 made it possible for me to get here and I, and I could have been arrested but most of the cops were already at the scene or coming behind us to the scene so uh, it wasn't it, it wasn't like I was going to get in trouble because all the cops were preoccupied already but but Joyce back to your question about uh, what's next there is no question that uh, something is uh, being planned against the Bundys and uh, the intel that we've received, and this was from uh, a very, very reliable source. Uh, we're talking police officer uh, or federal agent uh, 
credibility here. And uh, Newsmax uh, can try to take credit for the uh, Harry Reid thing, but uh, that's been all over, and it wasn't just from Newsmax. Uh, you know, Newsmax, I, I, I think, helped, uh, you know, and, and I don't want to take anything away from them. But the intel sources here have been uh, very powerful, and the state assemblywoman, Michelle Fiore, had uh, were, uh, was passing out some of those documents about that uh, Harry Reid China deal, and um, she didn't get it from Newsmax. Uh, I'm going to tell way. you right now, everybody's taking credit for it, Sheriff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is yeah, there's no shortage of uh, of organizations and people taking credit for the apparent success um, of this event. But I've got a question for you, Sheriff Richard Mack. As you know, I'm, I'm a cattle farmer, and uh, I, I take this matter very, very seriously. And I would be furious and hot on the pursuit personally if someone had stolen my cows. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I patrol our property, and I'm armed for, uh, on the outlook for cattle rustling. Now, cattle rustling is a serious crime, and people used to get executed. And we know that because we've seen the grainy black and white movies with a cowboy shooting somebody who stole their cows. Well, and and so here's here's the question. How is it possible that the federal government feels that they can steal $250,000 worth of cattle from an individual? How is that possible? How did they get away with it? How is that not a capital crime? Well, it, it might not be a capital crime, but it is absolutely a crime. And at one time, you're right, it was a capital crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, a, that's a question that we've been asking through this whole thing. But you have to realize, how does the federal government get away with shutting down the ranching industry in the state of Nevada? That's what they've been trying to do for the last 30, 40 years, and they've been doing it. There used to be 53 different ranches in Clark County alone. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bundy is the last one. Regardless of your feelings about the federal government, regardless of your feelings and uh, evidence about uh, improper raids and stealing cows and trying to protect the desert tortoise or grazing fees, and I think that's another issue in and of itself. We have grazing fees in this country. I think that's insane. But regardless of all of that, Folks, you have to know that the federal government is shutting down the range, uh, the rangelands in Nevada. Why? Why are they doing it? And then that brings right back in the Harry Reid story and w w what they really want to do with this land and what they what they're stealing it for. They're stealing the land. They're trying to claim uh, ownership over this land. It's not their land. They're trying to. That's they're right. stealing cattle. They're destroying families. They're destroying an industry. They're destroying our food supply. And people are sitting here going, like, the idiotic statements from Glenn Beck that they should be paying their fair share. So this is okay that the federal government's doing this. And uh, we ought to talk about pilt fees if we're going to play that game. But what we really ought to do is stand on property rights. The protection of life, liberty, and property is the only purpose of government. Sheriff, are they willing to file a lawsuit? That's what needs to happen next. They need to actively uh, go on the offensive, don't they? They do, and they need to to uh, charge the man, try to charge the man or sue the man that body slammed uh, the Bundy aunt that day. Uh, and uh, I, I just saw that on the TV during the break, and Fox News has still been running the story during the break, and they showed the sheriff uh, walking in there and doing his thing, whatever he I did. I might say the only people that have been violent so far is your federal government, right? That is correct. That is absolutely correct. And, they, you know, the federal government has a sordid history of not carrying one iota that they shoot unarmed people or or kill people. And, and this this is something that I, again, want to stress Joyce, all of you, they have hired people here who have no intention, have no moral fiber. If they're ordered to shoot, kill, maim, arrest innocent people, oh. the people that are hired by the federal government will do that. And I, and in our news, uh, we're going to have a, a press release today and a news conference. And I'm going to talk about that issue, that we have people here that know, should know what they're doing is wrong and should stand down, but they won't. And somebody ought to talk about, though, the cattle wrestling issue, too, where, hey, that's a crime. I think it's a capital offense. I think it's abuse. Nevertheless, though, hey, the government's committing crimes here. If you don't pay your, your fees, if that's their claim, fine. 
But does that give them the right to steal cattle? Does that give them the right to violate the law? The de facto government them, to do all that? Yeah, I mean, does it give them any, any position to uh, destroy the cattle ranching industry in Nevada? And it, I find it so astonishing that the American people are not just total. I mean, even liberals and, and mindless dummies, that uh, the uh, couch potatoes, I can't believe that this isn't hitting them, especially Nevadans, you know, that, that aren't getting involved and say, why is the federal government shutting down all the ranches in Clark County? It's a huge county. Yes, You've got plenty yes. of room for casinos and ranches. You know, uh, let me just say that uh, on Lou Dobbs, you know, in in um, uh, stead for for Fox News, they did something really good. Lou Dobbs came out in total support for what's going on there on behalf of uh, Bundy uh, uh, Friday night. He had a gentleman, Gavin McGinnis, on. And Gavin McGinnis said, and he said, there is no reason, no way anybody should be taking the government side on this. He said, if I had terminal cancer right now, and he was mad, he said, I would grab my Remington 700 and I would go down there. This is tyranny, he said. And he is so right. Well, I'm glad you told me that. Uh, I didn't know where Lou stood on this yet. I'm really glad you told me that. All I've done is Lou's hitting it out of the park, sir. Yes, he is. Well. Uh, good yeah. for him. Yeah, he was for this, but the rest of Fox News, they're they're in the old well. If there's a rule and a law, you better follow it. Kind of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I was supposed to get interviewed today by uh, Megan Kelly, and she was one of was kind of doing that and trying to take the middle middle of the road. Oh, the government's just protecting us and trying to do what's right. right but oh, come is she on. going to interview you? Well, I I don't know. I've been told that that might be happening today, and I was told that it might not. So uh, their reporter told me so, that. I pray so, but I bet she wimps out. Let me ask you this: How about what? She'll be sorry she did it. Well, this Agreed. yeah, this is actually a bigger story today than it was uh, all throughout this because right now you have subterfuge, you have such a sabotage going on here from the federal government, you have such a clandestine operation going now. How the the federal government's coming going to come in and save face and uh, come and still get the the Bundys, and if they're willing to get all of this going and to go to the lengths of and all the money they've spent to still go after the Bundys the way they plan to do it. We need to expose that, and that's what we're going to do today. We're meeting again with the, the Bundy family and some of the representatives at, at uh, 1030, and that's uh, Nevada time, Pacific time, and then we're going to the press conference at 1 o'clock, and that, that, that should be a telltale time for this whole event. All right, one of the big discussions is going to be over uh, how we define whose land is it. Uh, and really, um, some say it's the county land, some say it's the state lands. Uh, we need to establish that, and the sheriff needs to take the lead on that discussion to say, listen, this isn't federal government land. And it really, if we establish that reality, we can win. If we lose that reality and say it's federal government controlled land, we lose the battle by the very nature of whose is it, right? Well, I think that's a huge part of it. Uh, it's not the only part because you still, regardless, you still have a man who's been ranching on this land since 1877, his family. And so regardless of that, uh, squatter rights or Homestead Act or, or just the mere fact that you were here, there's, a lots, there's lots of legalities about that. And they can't just come in and say, okay, well, the federal government has taken over the land, and we have the uh, Grazing Right Act of 1948 or whatever, whenever it was. And, and so, no, the, there's, a, there's a lot there. But there are uh, uh, other officials here, Sam, who have actually uh, shown the evidence as to whose the land is, and we're going to try to uh, express that at the news conference today. And I think you're right. It's a vital issue. Uh, that it really is Nevada land, uh, and thus Clark County uh, land. But uh, the and, and the whole reason that I bring this up is the sheriff should be advocating for if anybody gets paid, it would be Clark County. Well, you would think, uh, and Mr. Bundy has actually been paying grazing fees to Clark County, and they didn't know what to do with them. I don't know if they forwarded on to the federal government or what, but he said that's where. Uh, the grazing fees would be legitimate. Uh, I'm not going to pay them to an illegitimate federal government who has and no claim And especially an land. illegitimate federal government that's not even doing what they've agreed to do, right? Correct. And uh, the basic fundamental principle there is where in the Constitution does the Constitution allow 
the federal government to own land. I think that's in the tyranny amendment, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the, the yeah. feds, the de facto government, and this is from Athena. She wants to say this. The de facto government or the rogue government wants the real estate, the water, the pipeline, the control. Uh, they want all of it. And we have allowed them in the past to have taken all of this property in the name of federal te- federal property when in fact it really is not it's our property they have taken from us what's your name tarina but we let it go too long what's your name joyce tarina tarina what uh, the, this lady oh athena athena i'm sorry athena nailed it mm-hmm. that's right well and um michelle fiore again a state assemblywoman who is really carrying the torch here carrying the lamp of liberty here, has been showing everybody evidence that that is the case. And uh, the governor uh, has not done his job. Uh, The other representatives here have not done their job. The county commissioners have not done their job. The sheriff has not done his job. If any of them had stepped up, this thing would have already been over. And instead, now we have a horrendous threat of more violence and uh, more uh, subterfuge from this government uh, who, when you embarrass them and you catch them off guard and you expose their inadequacies and incompetence, that's when they really get mad. And that's what I'm afraid of here. Yes. And uh, and all of us are. And, uh, in fact, uh, we went to church yesterday, Stuart Rhodes and I, my son, and a few other Oath Keepers, and uh, Brother Bundy was there. And he had two... Uh, armed guards with him even then. Whoa. And that's how serious everybody is about the threats. He's not paranoid. He He's being careful, and all of us have told him to be so. Uh, and, uh, you know, he didn't wait around to socialize or anything. He was in and out uh, of church. And uh, right after church, we had to get to some other meetings, and I had a radio show with the Attorney General of the State of Arizona, Tom Horn, and uh, Lyle Rapaki of the State Sovereignty uh, Movement in Arizona. And uh, we, we discussed these very same things that we're discussing now. And this is a powerful moment. This is a historic moment. And I, I want everybody to understand this, too. I've said this on your show before, Joyce, and I'll say it again. And I've said it a bunch of times on Sam's show. We, we need to realize where we are in American history. This is the most crucial time since the Civil War. Since the Civil War, we're talking 1860 yes, here, folks, and it is. And if we don't get involved in this, we're going to lose our country, and we are losing horribly right now. America is dying. We're at and the so, crossroads, and it's a question, really, of which road are we going to travel, right? We are making that choice, Sam. And uh, whether whether you do something about this or you do nothing, you are making that choice whether you like it or not. And I'm just worried that uh, the American people are going to let this slip through their fingers. And uh, something's going to happen here that we're going to, again, accept because uh, it was all Randy Weaver's fault. It was all David Korsh's fault. It was all Clive Bundy's fault. We're going to be not- back. Yeah, not is right. We're going to be back after this three-minute break. You can continue to donate at the Power Hour or go to CSPOA.org. We've still got donations coming in. We appreciate that so very much. We'll be back. Three-minute break. Stay tuned. Power Hour. Welcome back to Power Hour. 54 minutes after the hour, you're in the right place. That is if you want to know the truth. And I'll tell you, you are listening to a person who is giving you the truth of what's happening in Nevada. What do you call and, it, Ground Zero, Joyce? Yes, Ground Zero Nevada is right. And the uh, genie is out of the box. It is time to go. And we have people that are standing and standing and giving donations, and thank you very much for that. Because, you know what? I want my sheriff, Richard Mack, to be out there dealing with these BLM people. And, by the way, go to CowboysForLiberty.com if you want to see an inspiring website. CowboysForLiberty.com. If You know, I want him out there doing that. I don't want him having to worry about how he's going to get these sheriffs to get some kind of transportation funds available to them. Now, let's do our part because he has a job to do, and it doesn't, he shouldn't be the, the cruise director. He shouldn't be having to raise the funds for this. So please, listeners, that's a part we can do. If you're not going to Nevada, 
then jump on it and let's help pay for the food, the water, and the support for these people out there because Richard Mack is getting these sheriffs to get there and legislators. And I, I cannot say enough good for Sam Bushman for all the work he does, and I do not know how he does all that. But for Sam Bushman and Sheriff Richard Mack and CSPOA and Don and all the people that give up for this, you know, it's their liberty, yeah, but you know what? They're doing it for you, too, and we need to play our role. We all need to work together. Hey, Sheriff, just a quick question for you. Uh, let me ask you this. How great has been the support of other sheriffs for uh, the Bundys? Well, it's it's been uh, pretty good. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed there, but I, I would say that uh, Sheriff Cameron Noel has been down, and uh, uh, I think uh, Sheriff Gower from Iron County, and that's another one we, we're reaching out to today because uh, one of the Bundy's uh, sons lives in Iron County, Utah. And so we're going to reach out to every sheriff where they live to make sure that they're giving them extra patrol and extra protection. And we want those sheriffs to announce, and one will be Joe Arpaio, and we're going to try to make this happen, uh, where it's actually uh, uh, on film and the news, uh, get news coverage on it and actually maybe have a little press conference with Joe. Go, and go, Joe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we we hope that he'll come out and say, "Hey, federal government, uh, if you try to come here and kidnap this uh, citizen, uh, I will do everything in my power to go after you. I will prevent it. I will give this guy protection, and so on." So, you know, it, uh, it we are reaching out to the sheriffs. We've had a pretty good response from the sheriffs, and as Joyce said, we've had sheriffs that uh, we've paid to come out here and, and witness this for themselves and to have a show of support. And and let's be so, clear, we haven't paid them to come out we basically covered their costs to come well, out exactly right? exactly yeah. and mm -hmm. and uh, that can get pretty expensive especially when you get the tickets just a few days before mm. so w we've we've really we've really been proud of the sheriffs who are standing we have a, a, a couple of sheriffs in nevada who have made some statements about this because we have sheriffs who have done this before i don't want your listeners to think that this is the, an isolated case we've had sheriffs in nevada in idaho and even in san bernardino california if anybody wants to look it up. Look up Range Magazine, R-A-N-G-E, Range Magazine 2003. There's an article in the winter issue that talks about the sheriffs who stood against the BLM and revoked their law enforcement authority and revoked their permission to be there and refused to allow them to steal the cattle in these three different counties, and they actually forced the BLM to stand down, and it ended peacefully and without anybody getting in trouble and anybody losing their cattle. And uh, that's Tony, a case of not on my watch. Exactly. And then Sheriff Tony DeMayo of Nye County already did this with the Wayne Hage family, and uh, this has happened before, and some sheriffs have already stood and stood strong. And now we have uh, the sheriffs acquiescing or playing games, and I will tell you, Sam, you, you know, give credit where credit is due. I really don't believe Sheriff Gillespie deserves any credit. Uh, he, I'm glad he showed up, but I think he's been working behind our backs to help the BLM. Great work, Sheriff uh -oh. Nick. Uh-oh. I think you're right, but the fact is somebody could have died the other day, and thank heavens the cows are back, and thank heavens no one died. We'll be back after this one minute, ten second break. Stay tuned. That's all we'll be gone with the Power Hour. Sheriff Richard Mack. Welcome back to Power Hour. Thank you for joining us. Caring about your world, straight up top of the hour. We have uh, Sheriff Richard Mack for about another five minutes. I would like to give a chance for you to ask a question. We've only got him for a few minutes, but if you would like to give us a call, this is specifically for Richard Mack. And the next hour, we'll take calls just for call sake, but 855-995-6923. If you have something really relative to Sheriff Mack or the legal issues, 855-995-6923. Get your call in real quickly if you would like to ask him a question. I think we know now that it's on. I mean, we can't go back from here, and if we do, we will have to succumb to whatever it is they choose to do with us. So it is now time that we stand and stand and stand. And my fear is they're going to break out 10 or 20 of these issues all at the same time. Amen. And we're going to all have to be fighting for our territory, which means everybody in their state needs to be taking care of their people. Recommendations. Belly up to the bar to stop bureaucrats, huh? That's right. And Ed, your recommendations, Richard? If follow the example of these uh, cowboys that were hero, and we need to cowboy up. Every yes. one of us. 
Cowboy Up. I Cowboy like that. Ride for the brand, huh? Yeah. Cowboysforliberty.com. Check out that website. It's great. It says uh, Bureau of Land Manipulation is what that is. <laughs> the, that there's is no so question true. that there. this is a beyond tyrannical event. Uh, this is uh, government taking over the lives and livelihoods of good, honest American people. They're attacking good, honest American people. They're attacking law-abiding citizens. They're attacking people standing for the Constitution and their constitutional yes. rights. No one has advocated violence here. Uh, mm -hmm. Except for the government. Yeah, except for the government. Hey, let me go to a callers real quick. Uh, okay. I don't want to miss them. Robert in Virginia. Robert, you're on the air. Go ahead, please, with Sheriff Richard Mack. First off, thank you, uh, Sheriff Richard Mack, for everything you're doing. Yes. I have a, a few. One question is how many citizens are still out there on site in a protective stance. Number two, can you all find any judge anywhere that will do as uh, this other one of, uh, who's sitting there with Joyce has recommended actually filing some kind of lawsuit against our government? And yeah, we, we, have, we have some lawyers. We have some lawyers looking at that, and that's something we are – obviously, that's not a quick fix. That's never a quick fix. And we were pushing for that over the weekend to try to get some sort of law, uh, judge to do some sort of quick fix. It's just not one of those times. And uh, it's very difficult to get that uh, from Oh, yeah, courts. that'll be in the court system for years. And exactly. then it'll go to the appellate system. And, and we don't know how many people are here, but there still are people here. I don't know okay. how many. He doesn't know how many. Thank you very much, Robert, for the phone call and the interest. Let's go to Don in Tennessee. Don, you're on the air. Go ahead, please, with Richard Mack. Yes, Sheriff. Uh, Sheriff Mack, I want to thank you for your service, too, and everything you're doing. Yes. Uh, I met you years ago uh, by phone and Internet in Lake Charles, Louisiana. But my question is, uh, is it possible, as, as being the sheriff of the county, to just order all these alphabet agencies out of his county. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and when you were talking about what we need the American people to do, we need you to get after your sheriff. You need to get a relationship with your sheriff. You need to ask your sheriff, what would you do if this was happening in our county? Ooh, this could happen point. anywhere. That and is a good point. You need to be involved in that process, and you need a sheriff uh, uh, that is a constitutional sheriff. And if not, you need to be looking at these sheriff's uh, candidates that are running across the country. I've been supporting them uh, all across the country. And you need to recognize these uh, constitutional candidates who are running for sheriff, and you need to get that out there and help them. There's one and in so, Alabama. And a bunch, of Americans, a bunch uh, of Americans need to go to Gillespie and see if he'll sign the CSPA resolution. That'll put him <laughs> on the line to find out where he really stands. Yeah, right? and, and we need to promote that uh, CSPOA meeting coming up this uh, Friday. But also, let me go to uh, Kevin in Iowa. Kevin, you're on the air. Go ahead, please, with Sheriff Mack. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? We're Good. blessed. Thank you. Go ahead. Good. Um, I wanted to share something that I heard on Dave Hodges' show last night, Common Sense Radio. Uh, he's North, North 20 Coast seconds, County, go. I North well, I'll tell you what, stay right um, there. I'll, I'll bring you back for the break. we got a three-minute break. We'll be back, and we'll bring you on, and then we'll keep uh, Sheriff Richard Mack for just a couple more uh, phone calls, and then we'll let him go, because he is losing his voice. We'll be back. Stay tuned to the Power Hour. Joyce, Sam, Sheriff Mack, and uh, Kurt Crosby. Welcome back to Power Hour. Thank you for joining us. Caring about your world. Uh, we're going to be talking to um, uh, Sheriff Mack for just another couple of minutes. Kevin in Iowa, you had a question you wanted to get for him. Please go ahead. Uh, I wanted to make a comment. Dave Hodges on his show last night, uh, the Common Sense Show, said that it's been reported there are like 50 black trucks that were uh, reported by truckers on their way to the where this the situation with the Bundy's has been going on. So that was my only comment, maybe something to look into. Thank you, sir. Richard, is that true? Do you know anything about that? The only thing that we've seen about that are Internet reports. And so, uh, you know, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, we've heard more equipment is moving in, and we also heard that BLM rangers from as far away as Wyoming uh, have been asked to uh, come here. So uh, we don't know uh, if some of those vehicles have been uh, intended for some other area or if they're intended for here, and we have not been able to verify that that is happening. We just have the Internet reports at, that, uh, at this point. 
All right. Thank you very much for that report. And we also got a report that in Las Vegas they have a staging area, a potential possible staging area with the actual um, address. Had you heard about that, that there are a lot of Humvees, et cetera? We, we, we've heard about Humvees and, and other equipment coming into this area that they're actually mobilizing in Las Vegas. Uh, we have not uh, seen that. Okay. And, uh, John, do we have any more callers for Sheriff Mack? Charlie in California. Charlie in California. Charlie, go ahead, please. You're on the air with Sheriff Richard Mack. Yeah, good morning, Joyce. Good morning. Uh, Sheriff Mack. Yes, sir. Listen, this uh, other sheriff in uh, Clark County, yes. me, do you think that uh, he weighed the possibilities concerning uh, Waco situation, Ruby Ridge? No. To, uh, the fact that uh, he doesn't get stuff like this. He doesn't think the federal government. He doesn't think the federal government has ever done anything wrong, and um, he he's he's pro government. He, he's uh, pro corruption. He's he's pro buddies, uh, and cronyism is big time here. Um, no, nothing more cronyism uh, ever existed except with this police department and sheriff's office here. Uh, I'm again, like Sam said, I am really thrilled that he came because he did show. America, who is really in charge and who the ultimate authority is here. And he, uh, I think, learned that lesson also. And I believe a he averted bit. a crisis too, Richard, did he not? But uh, I believe he did, yes. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Charlie. Let's go to Johnny B. in Missouri. I got a, just a couple more calls and that's it. Johnny B. in Missouri, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, welcome to a wonderful day, guys. Uh, go ahead, please. Joyce, I actually wasn't looking to question, ask a question of Sheriff Mack, but the thing that comes to my mind is uh, the fact that uh, Sheriff Mack, with all due respect, why would the sheriff be the king in our country? He's not the king. I've never said that. And what I've said, if you'll read my book, The County Sheriff of America's right. Last Hope, he is the ultimate law enforcement officer in the county. He is the only one that works directly with the people. He has made them a promise to protect their God-given rights as detailed in the Constitution, and he needs to work with them to do that. He should be forming posses. He should be getting involved in the protection of his people, and that's what he's there for. And let me make okay. this very clear. Kings are not elected. The sheriffs are elected, sir. Yes. Thank yeah. you very much, yeah, Johnny well, B. That was, Johnny that B., that's good. okay. i got to move on. Let me get to David in, Cali David in uh, I think, California. Yeah, that's da right. David, go ahead, yeah, please. Morning, morning uh, Joyce and Sheriff. You know, I'm, uh, I'm torn on this because, uh, as a taxpayer, I'd like to see this guy paying some rent. And I think that he does uh, admit to owing 300000 but he doesn't admit to owing a million. But uh, regarding your last point... Can I ask a quick question before you continue? Who does he owe the money to? Uh, we, the people that own the, the I know, but where? Land. Hold on. Where would it be paid to? The county, the state, the feds, who? Uh, well, whatever uh, licensing agency there is for that. Well, hold land. on. That's what the debate is. He's offered to pay the county where he believes it rightly should be sent. The feds are mad because he won't send it to them. That's the right, debate. Whose land that? is it? And, and, and I will tell you this. I think grazing fees are hogwash. It's like uh, charging people for breathing. He is helping the land. Yeah, but it's he our is, land, right? It, it, he it, doesn't it, own those acres. What is he using? Six hundred thousand acres? It's not. It's not fifty acres. It's not two hundred acres. But he is. He, he is helping the land. He is working the land. He is preserving the land. He is not doing anything that he owes you any money for. He doesn't owe me. He doesn't owe you. He is helping, and and to charge water fees or grazing fees or driving down the road fees is just government getting that's out there easy. taking money that's, from people that easy. they is don't he... need and, don't, and okay. is not should not be All right. allowed. I, I don't think we're going to solve that question right now. I just wanted to add. I just got an email that it looks like uh, uh, Bundy is going to be on the. Uh, uh, on, on the um, let's see on another radio show today he's going to be on here we go Glenn Beck show today in the third hour at the Blaze I'll uh, leave it Network. to good old Glenn Beck to go against Bundy and then have him on huh so we'll see what happens on that uh, account alright Rod in Michigan Rod in Michigan your final caller with our guest today Sheriff Richard Mack go ahead please yeah, I was just wondering uh, what the uh, governor's role in this should have been he should, have called, out the, he should have called out the National Guard and put an end to this. Should have worked with the sheriff to make sure people were boots on the ground to get the BLM the hell out of here. And he's made very strong statements that they're violating the constitutional rights of these people. Then he should have moved in here and stopped it instead of trying to play a politician and doing nothing about it. 
Because violating constitutional rights is against the law, is it not, Sheriff? Yes, and the ultimate pr- two, the ultimate two protectors here are the governor and the sheriff. And the governor has made strong statements against it. The sheriff made no strong statements against it, but came in a little bit. And absolutely, the governor and the sheriff could stop this whole thing, and it would have been over in less than a day. Exactly what I thought. I heard a comment on uh, Sean Hannity. He had uh, he had uh, Bundy on there. Yes. Uh, Friday. Yes. Law enforcement officer called in and said, "Well, the BLM, they're just doing their job." Well, th- that could be uh, an indictment against the BLM because if that's their job, then that's uh, a ter- ter- tyranny of it at its worst. And if well, that's the their BLM job, is to be completely unconstitutional, and to be right? Killers and destroyers. Then that should scare the American people to death. Sheriff, isn't the BLM unconstitutional? Yeah, totally. Absolutely, totally. Wow. No question. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go because I know you need to, to rest your voice. You've got a lot of talking to do, but thank you so much for what you are doing there. And you are our sh- county sheriff there, uh, representative, and we thank you so much. Godspeed, sir. There. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you guys soon. Joyce, thanks all so right. much for Good all you've done here. Thank and you. Your listeners, uh, really, for helping. Thank you so very much. It's the listeners. Thank you so much for your uh, actions.